Hi, this is Anders from A Well-Tempered Hacker. I just wanted to make a quick video uh, because my uh, Super Micro Build video generated a whole bunch of questions uh, specifically about my use of uh, software RAID and, you know, why I don't use hardware RAID. You heard me talking about a RAID key that I, I uh, you know, a license key I didn't want to buy. Um, first of all, hardware RAID is fine. Uh, it's going to be the fastest solution out there, but it's important to remember that there are drawbacks. Uh, you can think of a couple of reasons to go for uh, RAID, and that would be, you know, you get speed, you get some uh, security if a, if a drive fails, and, uh, you know, you have the ability to have a bigger file system than any one hard drive in your computer uh, can give you. Uh, so those are, those are kind of the prevailing reasons for RAID. Um, they're great, but every time you add a disk to a computer, the likelihood that a drive fail will happen increases. Um, you know, it just increases with every, every drive you put in there. So the various RAID levels have been uh, uh, created to allow spare disks that automatically, you know, come online when a drive failure is sensed and that sort of thing. Um, but in order to keep your data safe, you have to be able to recover the RAID. And generally, my problem with hardware RAID uh, is that if your RAID card fails, you have to go get a new one. Uh, but not just any new one, you have to get exactly the same one you had, uh, which may or may not be available. Uh, you know, if that happens once, there's a solid chance it's going to happen again, uh, and, and then again you have to get exactly the right hardware and the cycle continues. Um, I say this from experience. I had a machine that the that, uh, hardware RAID died and I, I ended up buying a new card and it got the thing back up and going, but then I also bought a second card and it was very expensive at the time and, you know, I, I, I paid for this. Um, so you contrast that situation with software RAID. You take a little bit of a performance hit, but you can mix and match the hardware, you know, pretty much to your heart's content. If something is prone to breaking, you just start using other technology. Um, not only that, but if your entire computer dies and all you're left with are the drives, you can put them in any other computer and get your data back using publicly available, you know, RAID source from any Linux machine. Uh, so it's, it gives you a pretty flexible uh, uh, situation. Um, so it's a question really of using exactly the right static hardware that, that you buy uh, for a specific configuration or the nearly limitless flexibility the RAID gives you and really the only cost, the impact is so small in terms of uh, speed that you can barely measure it. So I, I personally for me it doesn't make sense. Um, but there is one more thing. So RAID made sense in a world where computers were much more expensive than they are today. As computers have become more and more commoditized, many computers are taking the place of, you know, the single monolithic computer. And these larger systems are being designed across multiple computers with failure as the norm, as the design principle. Um, so in turn, file systems are, are spanning these multiple computers instead of multiple disks within one computer. So that fault tolerant file system within a computer is less of a priority. Um, practical implementation of this would be the cloud. Uh, you know, you hear about this all the time. Uh, so other than the old school file server in the closet that hasn't been transferred to the cloud or hasn't been migrated, everybody's still kind of just using it, you know, that's, that's a reason for RAID. That's a good place to have a, a RAID. But, but pretty much it's going by, RAID is going by the wayside because of distributed file systems and this sort of thing. Uh, so I just wanted to make that point.